I'm going to give you some troubleshooting tips that is pertinent to everything that you do. So let's go. Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak, and I've made a living for the past 40 years of troubleshooting problems, mostly other people's problems about equipment. Now, these troubleshooting techniques that I'm going to tell you about is relevant to anything that you're going to have a problem with, whether it's electrical, mechanical, personal, coding, or anything else. So listen up. And the first thing that I'm going to tell you about is if you would like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ding that bell so you can be notified whenever there's a new video coming out because you know YouTube does not notify you unless you ding that bell and check off all those things that they want you to check off. They're just making it harder for you. So go ahead and subscribe and ding that bell. The biggest problem that I came across was when somebody did something, they thought they fixed it, but all they did was they rigged it so it would work, but they didn't actually fix the problem. And after that, there was another problem and I was called in to do it and I had to go in and troubleshoot it. And I found out that I was not only trying to look for what they said the problem was, but I was trying to find out what the other person did before me. Now, granted, you may not have somebody else working on your model railroad or on anything else that you're working on. Maybe you do, but you have to consider what was the last thing that happened on there that where it was working correctly and when did it stop working was it gradual or was it all of a sudden and you got to take a look that's the first place that you have to look and you got to think back because there's a lot of times that i've worked on my model railroad here i just laid something on the track or i was working on something and something i bumped onto something and it went over across the track and it shorted it out and it, it was something as simple as that and that's the the first thing you got to look at number one is what was the last thing that you were doing on there when it worked and think about when it stopped working now if you racked your brain and you can't think of anything that you know you weren't doing any i didn't do anything i didn't touch it <laughs> You hear that a lot, you know, when when you're you go into a, a, a museum or something like that, and something goes bang, and then the little kids are saying, "Oh, I didn't do it! I didn't do it! It wasn't me!" If you got that part of it out of the way, where you you just turned it on and it didn't work, then the first thing you got to do after that is break it down into steps. Okay, what part of it isn't working? Now, I get a lot of questions all the time, and it is hard to troubleshoot something over email, especially when you don't know what the thing looks like to begin with. You don't know what the person's been doing, but you have the advantage right there because you know what you've been doing on it. You know how you've worked on it you know how you wired it you know how you did all the mechanical parts of it so you're the one that has the knowledge of how to get this thing to work again so what you have to do is break it down into small steps where is the problem how is it supposed to work and why is it supposed to work that way and once you know that then you can determine this is what i have to look for I'm not giving you any specific things to look at because this goes out in general. This pertains to everything that you troubleshoot. The first thing that you look at is where is the problem? Is it localized to just one section? Is it your entire layout? I had somebody ask me saying that they have a block. It's the biggest block on their railroad and it's not working. Okay, what, what do you do to that? you break it into smaller blocks okay and that's the number one thing that you do after you figure out if you did anything 
to cause that. Break it down in half. Okay, when you break it down in half, you're making a smaller half. So say your problem is this big, break it in half. Check this part here. Find a way to isolate from here to here and see if you still have the problem there. If you don't have the problem there, then you know that the problem is over here someplace. So now you have it broken down into half of what you had before and do that again. Find another place where you can isolate it and break that in half into this half right here and see, does this half work? Okay, yeah, this half works. So you know from over here to over here works. So you know your problem is over here. Okay, then you check in there to see what you could find in that and break it down again and break it in half and keep breaking it in half until you isolate where that problem is and eventually you're going to find that problem it ha it it works every time you just have to take a big problem and break it down into smaller portions to where you could find it in that small portion. And that's the key to troubleshooting everything. No matter what the problem is, whether it's electrical or mechanical or in code or anything else, this pertains to all of it. You just have to break it down into a small portion and eliminate the good stuff. You don't want to have to worry about the entire thing and say, oh my goodness, this isn't working. Find out what works and find out what doesn't work and forget about what works because you're not worried about that. Put that aside and only tackle what doesn't work and get it down into the smallest possible situation where you could find the problem. And if you don't find the problem there, then ask for help. But until you do that, go through go through that step of breaking it down before you ask anybody else for help. Because how are they going to find out what the problem is if you just tell them, I got a problem with my layout and I don't know where to start. Well, that's where you start. You start by troubleshooting it yourself. I have videos on how to use a meter, how to troubleshoot it with DC. The same thing goes with DCC. You could still use most of the techniques that I showed in the DC with DCC. And I also have another video out on DCC++ and motor shields where I explain something towards the end of the video, something similar to what I'm talking about right now. We have some more comments, questions, answers, a lot of answers on from my emails. I'm not going to name names on this one. This is going to be anonymous, but there, there's a lot of questions on there that I get on my emails. So let's get going with this right now. What is working and what is not working? So you start at the beginning and say you got power here, but you don't have power over here at the end. We'll cut that in half and then check it over here. If you have power there, then you know you don't have to worry about this over here that you start looking over that way. But if you don't have power where you cut it in half, cut it in half again. If you break that down into smaller steps, if you break it down into the smallest portion that you could possibly get it in, you're going to be able to find where that problem is. And if you can't, that's when you ask somebody else for help. And probably the best thing to do is somebody to go there in person or to take pictures of it or to chronicle everything that you've done to it. Because just by telling somebody that you, you're, it doesn't work and I have, this, I have this enormous layout and it worked one day and it doesn't work, can you help me? Nobody can help you with that kind of information. You have to give them good information. 
If you don't give them good information, they're not going to be able to troubleshoot it. You have to give them solid information of step by step of what you did, what you've checked, how you checked it. I get questions all the time about how do I find this? You have to give good information while you're doing that. If you follow these easy steps of just breaking your problem down into smaller problems, you should be able to find your problem on your model railroad or anything else that you're working on. So until the next time, we'll see you and good luck with your projects.